morning kids. Tom here. I hope you've had good weeks. Maybe an exciting week or maybe a quiet week. Sometimes weeks go by and nothing really happens. And then sometimes they can be surprising. A lot of things happen. Sometimes good things. Sometimes they could be difficult things. But just have a think about your week. And we're going to be talking about things that can really surprise us and take us off guard. So maybe this week was a difficult week. Maybe you went out to feed the chickens and then got scared and the chickens chased you. That can happen. It's happened to me. Maybe you've Think of some other things that could have happened. Maybe you've walked out of a door and a bucket of water has landed on your head. That sort of thing can be surprising and it can happen. It sure can. Oh. What? And maybe you've been needing to get to work or probably not work. Maybe school. Maybe you've been needing to get to school and your car won't start and you don't know why and it can be surprising. Seatbelt on. Okay, we've got to get to school. We've got to get to school. Go. Why won't it start? Sometimes it can get us down, but we're going to have a look uh, today in the book of Acts in the Bible. The book of Acts, chapter 9, um, and we're going to read a story about uh, Saul on the way to Damascus, and he was very surprised. He thought he was going to go do one thing, and Jesus interrupted him, and it turned his life around. So, let's read. So Acts chapter 9, Saul, now Saul was, uh, was of the, now Saul was very upset with the new Christians, he thought they were going against what God wanted, so he was out to get them, arrest them even, and uh, put them in prison, so he was working against the followers of Jesus. So chapter 9, meanwhile Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found anyone there who belonged to the way, the way was the early church's way of talking about Christians. It was so new, they didn't even have the term Christians yet. Whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. Now, some of this can be hard to follow, so I've uh, drawn up some pictures to follow. That helps me. So here we have Jerusalem, and then we have this long road to Damascus. Maybe there's some hills. I'm not sure if that's true. I don't actually know the jungle. And then maybe they go past some trees and past this lake, all the way down here to Damascus here. So remember we have the, the followers of the way, which are the Christians down here, the disciples of Damascus. And then we have Saul sitting out for his journey, way at the top here. And later on we'll hear that he actually took some people with him to help him on his journey. There we go. There they are up there. So as he neared Damascus on his journey, so
As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. There we go, we'll put it in there. <gasps> he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Fell to the ground. Oh. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Asked Saul. I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, Now get up and go to the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men travelling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anything. So Saul got up from the ground. But when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand to Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. I'll pop them off. I'll go to the next page. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. So we put Ananias in his house there. Perhaps he was on his bed. Or maybe about to go to bed. He was getting ready. I think he's sitting there. Okay. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarshish named Saul. For he is praying. In the vision, he has, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports of this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. For the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings, before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Okay, so he's out of his own house. And into Saul's house. So remember, Saul's there. Perhaps he can be sitting there and still blind, but he's been praying. He's been praying to the Lord. And the Lord has heard his prayer and said, and a nice wooden coming. There he goes. Up you go, and a nice go. Fella can move out of the way here. Can come here. Okay. Still not poke him in the eye there. So, make me a nice. There we go. Maybe the 1.5 meter rule. But he didn't. There wasn't no coronavirus at that point. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, "Brother Saul." The Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, some something like scales fell off Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptised. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. So, wow, that would have been a big shock for Saul. Can you imagine? He was on his way. To Damascus to do one thing and then God changed everything around. It looked completely different. He was going to um, actually become a disciple of Jesus himself. So can you imagine when he went blind? That would have been a big shock. He thought he was doing the right thing and following what God wanted and then 
he found out he was wrong, but God changed him and turned the things around. And uh, he, uh, even though that was a was a bit of a full on experience, I would have said, going blind and having to be led by hand the whole way into Damascus, that would have been pretty scary. And you wouldn't have known if you're getting your sight back or not. But God was there and he had a plan and he'd sent already before, um, uh, had talked to Ananias to, to go and pray for him. So God had a plan. He didn't just leave it at that. He had a plan. Um, so he shows his love in that. Um, so how's this week been, I guess? If you can think back on this week and this year, all the different challenges that we've had and challenges from COVID, it's all been a, a very different year. We haven't been able to do all the things we've usually done. Maybe your school's different. Maybe having birthdays are different. You can't have as many people. And uh, yeah, it's been, yeah, something's been very difficult. Maybe you've struggled a lot. Maybe there's things that really hurt and you don't know why. And it feels like it's unfair. But remember that God does have a plan and he loves you. And even in these hard times, you can always pray to him and uh, he loves to hear what's going through your mind. And as we did last week, we casted our prayers onto Jesus. Just remember, you can always talk to him and he loves hearing your prayers. Um, and also remember, that you can talk to your mums and dads and caregivers. They, they will love to hear what you're going through too. So just be... Be ready to to share, I guess. So, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, to everyone in the Sunday school, um, we'll be moving on to the next section. But everyone who's tuned in, thanks for coming. We'll see you then.